Radio Three Four Connection. This is Tommy. This video is on your WWE pay per view that was uh, earlier tonight. And the breaking news from The Rock and his lawyer, as uh, The Rock's attorney forced uh, force of New Jersey, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie to pull a YouTube video that they've been promoting. And you can check that, vi uh, that video at this link here. And WWE star. Former WWE star Dwayne The Rock Johnson's attorney had a New Jersey governor rem uh, remove the video as it was uh, released by Christie Camp releasing called Impending Financial Crisis and briefly featured a clip of The Rock and he didn't want it in there. So you can still uh, view the, vi the video at that link. And there's no telling how long the video that includes will be active. So check it out while you can. The Christie Camp has released a new video about The Rock included. Thanks to .NET reader Adam A. for passing along the, the video and the news. And NXT spoilers for four shows that start off uh, with the July 31st show. Well, Dark Match, Solomon Crow over Travis Tyler. And for the 31st show on the network, Tyler Breeze defeated Angelo Dawkins. After the match, Breeze was about to show his music video again when Adrian Neville interrupted. That uh, wanted to know when Breeze was going to cash in his title shot and make a joke about Breeze's mom sending him a Snapchat. Uh, the two followed briefly and then Neville got the better of Breeze until Breeze ran him off. Uh, ran off. Match number two, Charlotte uh, won a match over Becky Lynch. The Ascension squashed an enhancement team. Nobody named. Uh, after the match, a tournament was then set up to establish new top contender to face the Ascension for the. Uh, <coughs> she tag title. Match number four, Bull Dempsey and Mojo Lolly defeated the mechanics of Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. Match number five, Adam Rose defeated Tyson Kidd as Rose gave us Lolly Pop to Natalya. And then Tyson got mad, allowing Rose to score to win with a small package. As the first show was said to be super boring in this uh, episode, it was announced that the next set of tapings will take place at full sale in two weeks. It's on July 31st when this one debuts. And August the 7th show, that was taped. Enzo Amori and Colin Cassidy defeated Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger in, in the tag tournament. Amori and Cass were said to be over huge with a full sale crowd. Match number two, CJ Parker over Xavier Woods. Match number three, Divas match. Bailey defeated Eva Marie as a full sale faithful who had been chanting better than Batista for the last six plus months, actually chanted worse than uh, Batista at Eva Marie. And it was a loud thank you chant from, uh, for Bailey during this match as uh, Bailey won the match. And your main event for that evening, uh, Sami Zayn and Adam Rose over Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel in the tag tournament. August the 14th show, the Vol Villains defeated Bull Dipsy and Mojo Rawley in the tag tournament. After the match, Bull attacked Mojo, and the crowd uh, chanted, Thank you, Bull, in, in response. Bull seemed to leave before coming back and attacking Mojo again to even the bigger reaction from the crowd. They chanted one more time, but Bull left. They seemed to get over, get, seemed to get him over as a baby face. Funny considering the purpose was precisely the opposite. Match number two, Bailey again defeated another opponent, Sasha Banks, to become the number one contender to the NXT Women's Championship. As champion Charlotte came out after the match to raise Bailey's arm and take her hand. Match number three, Callisto and Sankara over Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy in the tag team tournament. Uh, match number four, Adrian Neville defeated Tyler Breeze by disqualification to retain the NXT Championship. The finish came with Tyson Kidd interfered, Breeze was pissed, and then he attacked Kidd until they turned their attention and both attacked Adrian Neville. Sami Zayn ran down to make save and when he grabbed the NXT title to hand, hand to Neville, he held on to it for a little bit too long. Looks like a fell four way down the road. Sami Zayn took a mic and called the Hill back out for a, for a tag match. They came back out and got the huge upper hand before the bell rang. And your main event, uh, match number five, Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn over Tyson Kidd and Tyler Breeze. Neville being Kidd for the finish in the dark segment. Ray Wyatt came out in complete babyface mode. Kidd and Breeze were still in the, 
in the ring until Wyatt beats them both up and disposes of them. Ray cut a baby face promo to send his cult of full sail home happy. Though overall, this was said to be a particularly dull set of taping. And now for your... Pay-per-view, Battleground, well, aired live on the WWE Network, and surprise, we have two matches on the pre-show. Renee Young opened the show with a panel of Booker T, Christian, and Alex Riley. The audio was really bad, and Renee was hard to hear. I, did, I couldn't even get it pulled up. I waited like 45 minutes before I even got the uh, actual pay-per-view pulled up on the internet. Well, Alex Riley gave the... Uh, Sell for the odds being stacked against Cena. They sent it down to Michael Cole's Law with JBL and Jerry King Lawler. They made their pick for the main event in Fandango, made a difference for the uh, for an unannounced match. A picture from Twitter showed Layla and Summer, Ray, uh, Summer Rose hanging out with Adam Rose. Rose was out next with his crew and the women. So we get Fandango versus Adam Rose. Fandango's Sam Rose, Summer, and Layla suddenly led the Rosebuds around the ring. Fandango went, went to the floor and asked them what they were doing. Layla slapped him, and, su and Summer slapped the opposite cheek as well. Rose then rolled Fandango in and hit the party foul for the win. The, match, the whole match took a minute, 20 seconds. How much longer will Adam Rose be the unannounced match guy for a pay-per-view? Renee uh, then set up a uh, video that recapped the Shields. Rise and break up, focusing on the subsequent feud between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. The panel gave their thoughts on the match and then traditioned into, uh, into, into a hype video for Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt and their thoughts on that match. If anyone had uh, anything of value to say, I would have written it uh, with uh, letting, you, letting you know what's going on here. Backstage, the Usos had a promo with Tom Phillips and that was all over the place. They said uh, they would each get a pin call tonight. Cameron and Naomi made their separate entrances. And this was the uh, advertised match for the pre show. And earlier this week, uh, they did uh, remove two members from the uh, pay per view match itself on the Intercontinental Battle Royal. And that was Adam Rose and Fandango. They were removed from the match. <coughs> well, Cameron and Naomi made their separate entrances. Cameron had new music. Naomi had the folk song. Cameron was dressed as a schoolgirl. That was a uh, cute attempt. Naomi was, was in her che in checker gear that looked really bad on her. So we got that match up. As Cameron ran from Naomi to start the match and used it to, to hit a kick, Naomi powered back with a fast press. Cameron slammed Naomi into the ropes and took the schoolboy roll up with a handful of tight for the win. And that match doubled. The Fandango match with Adam Rose took an entire three minutes and eleven seconds, along with some uh, still some uh, internet feeds going on. That's why I'm uh, getting the result from the dirt sheet. Thanks to ProWrestling.net and Chris Shore who sent in the this, this uh, particular result. And the battleground hyping the major matches on the card, followed by the. Battleground opening and pyro. Cole saw JBL and Lawler were all on commentary. The Osos made, made their entrance and Harper and Rowan were out next. Video showing their match for Raw, where the wrong Russo was pinned. Uh, the Usos versus Luke Harper and Eric Rowan in a two out of three falls match uh, for the tag team title. Jay Uso slapped the mask off of Rowan to start off the, ma uh, the match. Uh, the Usos came back with some early offense, then sent Rowan and Harper to the floor to recruit. But the heels quickly settled into control and worked in and out on Jay. Jay hit a back suplex on Harper and dove for a tag to Jimmy. Jimmy jumped over Harper and hit the rope. Harper hit a big boot and covered it for the first fall. Wyatt family, 1 to 0 so far. And that first part took 4 minutes 43 seconds. Harper had to wait about 30 seconds before he could begin the next fall. He and Rowan uh, had several quick near falls to play out the first fall. They took uh, forever to make his way back to the apron. Jimmy flipped his way out of the back suplex and then tagged in Jay. Jay jumped over Harper and rolled him up for the pinfall where they even up the score at 8 minutes 10 seconds. 
and the event tied up at one to one. Roman Thorne men and beat the, beat the hell out of Jay momentarily. Harper had to push Roman back uh, to the corner before the ref would let the final fall start. Harper attacked Jay with the power moves and then slings shot into the ropes. He shot Jay into the corner. Jay knocked Roman down and then kicked Harper. <coughs> Jay tagged Jimmy and Harper went to the floor. Jimmy dove on Harper and then on Roman. Jimmy rolled Harper in the ring and went back, went back and forth. Jimmy hit Whisper in the wind for a two count. Harper blocked the super kick and kicked Jimmy into to the floor. Harper dove on Jimmy and then rolled him back in the ring as the crowd started their first awesome chant of the night. Harper went to dive on Jay, but Jay kicked him and uh, Jimmy rolled him up for the near, for a near fall as Harper hit the power bomb for a near fall for himself. Roman went to the top rope and tried for a splash. Jimmy moved and he crashed. Harper went to the top rope and then dropped to the floor. Jay tagged in and hit the top rope. Splash for the great near fall. Jay went to the top again and Harper slowed, uh, slowed him up. Roman came, uh, came to the top and Jimmy ran up and tagged. Roman double superflexed both Usos to the mat and covered Jimmy for a two count. Harper tags in and uh, they stood Jimmy up. They ran in and kick, uh, hit kicks. The match broke down and Harper hit the discus clothesline and covered Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy had to break it up. Uh, Jay had to break it up, that, that is. Harper dumped Jay and set up again to hit Jimmy. Jimmy hit a super kick. Jay slid in and they hit a double super kick on Harper and Rowan. And then hit a double uh, top rope splash for the, near, for the final ball. The Usos retained the tag title at 18 minutes 48 seconds. And their face paint was just a uh, few. Uh, remember uh, Umaga and his face paint? Well, that's how one of the Usos was uh, dressed as uh, Umaga face paint. Wearing. As it was an outstanding match, the ending was a little kitschy uh, for everybody, but slight, uh, on, on slightly. I also think the wrong team won, but it's hard to criticize anything after this match. The bar has been set awful high tonight, but I also think this card has the ability to answer. Rollins and Ambrose hype video aired, but there was no actual match. Backstage, Rollins cut a promo on Tom Phillips, I mean, uh, with Tom Phillips. Rollins said he was uh, smiling because tonight he gets to put an end to Dean Ambrose. He said that uh, he was going to squash Ambrose like the cockroach he is. He said the answer to Ambrose's question was no, that's not all I have. He started to say he was going to be the next champion, but Ambrose flew in and attacked him. Ambrose beat the hell out of Rollins and, and the set. And a group of guys ran up and pulled Ambrose off. Triple H ran up and told them to toss Ambrose from the building. Therefore, there was no match. You know, Hunter checked on Rollins, uh, who sold the attack. The house team sold, uh, befumbled and uh, asked what the, that meant for their match. They finally set, set it up for the for next month. Paige made her ring entrance, and a video shows that he that she won the Divas Championship. Uh, AJ Lee made her ring entrance, and a video shows how she recaptured the title. So we get your title match, and my internet he went completely out during this match and a half. Uh, the women took hands to start. As I got, uh, got it from ProWrestling.net, they locked up. And Paige broke clean. She smiled and clapped at AJ. They repeated the spot and AJ breaking clean and then she skipped around. The now team started entertaining themselves as Paige took control of the match work a clean but heelish attack. AJ reversed and lifted into a tornado DDT. Paige came right back and drove them both to the floor. She slammed AJ into the wall and then rolled her back in the ring. She went, for, uh, went to the top rope and AJ ran up. They botched a sunset bomb that looked like AJ landed hard. Paige caught an AJ crossbody attempt and tried to flip her into something, but AJ twisted it into a back, black widow. Paige sold it and then powered out. Then she hit the page turner for the near for a near fall. She tried to hook the PTO, but AJ reversed it. Reverse into a pinfall attempt. They broke the hold and AJ hit the shining wizard out of nowhere for the win. And this match took 7 minutes 13 seconds. Good match uh, for a, de a decent Divas match that had some bad spots. It didn't like AJ kicking out of Paige's finisher, but Paige not kicking out of AJ. Well, especially after AJ took the heat uh, almost the entire match. The action was good, but the story of the match failed for 
the reporter. A summer slam hike video air, aired backstage. Orton looked for Kane. Kane appeared and said Orton made a bad decision coming back there. Orton said he was there to apologize and then get back on the same page. Orton said he was so, he was sorry and asked Kane if he was uh, sorry. Kane said being the devil's favorite demon meant never having to say I'm oh, sorry. Orton said it was the most important that that neither. Cena nor Reigns left for the title tonight. Kane said that that wasn't going to happen and assured Orton the winner of the match was standing right here. He walked off and left Orton looking upset. The panel took over again, hyping the main event and setting up a video recap of the uh, debate from Raw. I, w I wish the uh, internet be would have stayed gone for this match because this was uh, actually boring as hell. Uh, because we already, we already guessed, but, uh, Luce have a win. Because, uh, you know how they go back and forth. One would win, uh, on a TV show, the other one would win on the pay-per-view, uh, yada, yada, yada. Well, Lana and Luce have made their ring interest. Lana, uh, set up the crowd to boo them and told them to shut up, to stick. Uh, she said the American propaganda machine blamed Russia for the current events, but they were the ones war-mongling. In Afghanistan, and she said Americans found their Western culture and so-called democracy down everyone's throat. She said we were leader, uh, we were leaderless, and called our president a wuss. She put over Putin and said tonight Rusev would crush each and every one of us, along with Jack Swagger. Swagger and Coulter made their entrance as Coulter took a mic and said they had heard all they wanted to hear from Natasha and Boris. She slapped uh, Coulter and uh, Swagger went after Rusev. Lana Coulter calmly left the ring while the two big men brawled around. Swagger clotheslined uh, clothesline Rusev over the top rope and Rusev looked, took it rough. He finally got back in the ring starting match. And there really wasn't much of a match to this at all. Rusev, uh, Swagger took advantage and started to hook the Patriot lock. Rusev went to the floor to regroup and came back with a follow-away slam. Rusev worked the nerve pinch forever. Uh, Swagger finally escaped to the floor and told the talk to up. Rusev kept attacking Swagger as he tried to get back in the ring. Swagger got pissed and hit a hangman. He slid in the ring and hit a big boot in the corner and he hit a Swagger bomb and covered for two while Lana freaked out. Swagger got caught up in the ropes and took a big kick. Rusev went for a super kick, but Swagger picked the leg and hooked the Patriot lock in. Rusev started to make it to the ropes, and Swagger pulled him back in the center of the ring. Rusev pulled himself back to the ropes for the break. Rusev went uh, to the floor momentarily, and as Swagger followed, well, he kicked, flipped the leg, and hooked the Patriot lock again. Well, Rusev countered and crawled over to the stairs, pulling his leg up. Knocking uh, Swagger into the steel steps and the ring post simultaneously. And Rusev slides in the ring just before the 10 count. So he went by count now. And the whole match took 9 minutes 59 seconds. After the match, the trainer checked on Swagger as Lana they gave Rusev the crush command and Rusev rolled back out to the floor to drag Swagger in the ring. He stomped back, uh, to, uh, stomped the back and took, uh, hooked the accolade. Until the ref begged him off. So my thing was that was kind of, kind of stupid. Because if they were going to try to reverse the uh, match, you can't reverse a count out win. Decent match. Really like. Well, if you're going to do this as a, as a boring match, then that's what the other way to do it. Well, it's, it's a count out. There is a time and place for cheap finishes. Not only this was a good place for that. We did a great job of Swagger looking strong at the end. Perfect way to give this feed yet another month. Stardust and Goldust cut a weird, another weird promo about the Cosmic Key. Wow, Seth Rollins made his ring digits. Momentarily, uh, Cole said Hunter tweeted that Ambrose would not be returning tonight. Rollins took the mic and said he was there to be declared the victor by forfeit. He made Justin Roberts announce him as a winner and played to the crowd just before leaving. They started up the ramp and they cut to the announcers. Suddenly, Ambrose comes flying down the ramp on attacking Seth Rollins as they uh, go back to, they fall into the crowd and back to ringside. Ambrose back drops Rollins on the Spanish announce table. Well, the feed went out, so I didn't see this. 
uh, them, uh, in the arena at all. When the thing came back in, they were in the garage area where the cars are in the parking lot. Well, on the Spanish announce table, they continued the attack. Security ran out and pulled Ambrose off several times, but he kept escaping and attacking Rollins. Triple H came down and, and helped separate them. He finally got Ambrose away, and Hunter held up Rollins as the victor. Now, team argued over what just happened, and uh, they set up a video that what recapped uh, Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho. Wyatt and family made their ring entrance, followed by Jericho. Jericho jumped Wyatt's rocking chair over on his way to the ring. So we get uh, Bray Wyatt, supposedly with Harper and Rowan, they weren't there. With Chris Jericho, the two men brawled uh, close to two, three minutes before Jericho went for the wall to Jericho. Harper Rowan jumped on the apron in the distraction, allowed Wyatt to drop Jericho. Jericho came right back and hit his springboard drop kicks that filled Wyatt to the floor. Jericho went to the top rope and hit a dive on all three men. Well, when my internet he came in, did not see uh, Rowan or Harper out there. Well, he rolled way into the ring and tried to get in. Harper uh, grabbed Jericho's leg, but the ref saw it and ejected Harper and Rowan. So there you go. That's why they wasn't there when the internet dude came back in. Uh, Bray's whole shot, but drove Jericho to the floor. Jericho nearly killed the cameraman in the progress, but he didn't budge one bit. He's the Iron, Iron Man camera, cameraman. Back in the ring, Jericho uh, started a little comeback, but Wyatt stopped him with a gut buster after he boxed the first attempt at it. Jericho started a, another hope spot and hit a bulldog. He went for a lion's salt, but Wyatt got the knees up. Wyatt popped up in the, in the crowd walk and then slammed Jericho with a rock bottle. He set up for the corner splash, but Jericho hit an elbow with Dan and dropped Bray hard on the bottom turn buckle. Bray went to the apron and Jericho followed. Wyatt hit a DDT on the apron for a near fall. Wyatt hooked the lock in the sister Abigail, but Jericho escaped and tried, uh, and tried for the walls of Jericho again. As Wyatt fought back and hit his flying elbow for a two count, Jericho hit the code breaker out of nowhere and covered him for the win. In a 15 minute, two second match. Uh, not the match I thought we might get. I was, uh, uh the reporter thought that, uh, Bray was gonna win. I was kind of mediocre on this one, didn't really care. But it did feel like they were holding back a little. I assume we'll get this match again next month. I'm not thrilled with the finish, but as long as Wyatt Ultimately wins in the few convincing manner, this will be fine. After all, Jericho is getting those old as I am. I'm 45, he's probably 46 to 48. Uh, uh, Seth Rollins was shown leaving the arena with security. Well, this is where uh, I guess the internet uh, feed uh, is uh, showing uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose backstage in the parking lot. Uh, he told security that he was fine and, and could leave, so he did. He immediately got spooked and looked around. Uh, as some of the people in the chat room that was on uh, Ringside News said that uh, they saw something pop up out of a uh, a uh, back of a car. Uh, type of thing. The Zambos popped out of a trunk, and that's what they saw, and attacked Rollins. They brawled around outside the arena. Where the cars were, and Rollins jumped in his car and sped away. Entrance for the Battle Royal made their entrances. This took like five to eight minutes. Start off was Damian Sandow, dressed as a nerdy white guy at the beach. Bad News Barrett came out, came to the ramp with his arm in a sling, and he said whoever won tonight would be champion. But he had bad news, as I predicted. I've got some bad news for you. Let me have some go for him. He said that the winner would be like an old couple moving to Florida. He said it would be nice at first, but they were just delaying the inevitable. He said the hourglass would run out, and the winner tonight would have his brain in by a bull hammer elbow. Thus, uh, saying he wants his he wants a title shot when he first comes back. Match number five, battleground battle royal for the Intercontinental Championship. This is a little bit controversial. I did not see this side under the bottom rope at all, and this sets up the finish. Everyone attacked Kali as uh, he was coming in, and they tossed, he tossed him all away as he eliminated a couple of jobbers, and then Sheamus hit him with a broke kick. 
And then they all teamed up to get Kali out of, out of the match. So he was eliminated. <coughs> and then everyone ended up on the mat at one point. Then Ryback uh, faced off with Sheamus. Sheamus eliminated him with a bull kick. He was trying to eliminate Sheamus, but Sheamus took him out. And this is where the camera is uh, watching uh, around. But the reporter said uh, that Miz went under the bottom rope until the end of the match happened. Well, Titus tossed Seamus around the mat, around the ring. Bo Dallas hit him from behind and eliminated Titus. Bo celebrated momentarily as Cesaro dropped him. Cesaro and Kofi had a spot on the apron where Kofi skinned the cat on Cesaro. Ziggler then eliminated Del Rio. Miz ran in and tried to eliminate Ziggler. He failed and went back to the floor again to hide. Cesaro eliminated Big E, but Big E stood right close to the road. He tried to eliminate Kofi. Kofi landed on top of Big E's shoulders. Uh, Cesaro grabbed Kofi and deadlifted Kofi in a suplex back into the ring. He Slater ran over and eliminated Cesaro. And the crowd popped momentarily for him. So this was, uh, this was like a, well, if he would win, this, this would be your underdog. Well, uh, that was momentarily. Seamus tossed Slater quickly and finished him with a blow kick. Dallas went after Seamus momentarily, and Seamus hit him with his floating forearms on Dallas. Ziggler hit Dallas with a drop kick to eliminate him. It looked like Seamus and Ziggler were the final two. Momentarily, but Miz was still on the floor. Ziggler went for the Famouser, but it was botched or countered. Seamus lifted for a power bomb. Ziggler tried to escape, and Seamus went fell awkwardly. Then Seamus hit a slingshot on Ziggler over the top rope, but Ziggler held on to the rope, top rope. Uh, Seamus went to the apron, and they battled. Ziggler ended up back in the ring and super kicked Seamus when Seamus tried his slingshot shoulder tackle. Miz ran in from behind and tossed Ziggler out for the win. And new Intercontinental Champion at 14 minutes, 30 seconds. Temple go battle, battle royal. Fair and the wrong guy won again. Miz doesn't interest me in the least anymore, and I get the feeling I'm not alone in that position. Even the reporters said that himself. How he won, it's supposed to get him some heat. Well, he's, I think he's done this well once, once before. But the crowd reaction is any indication. It, uh, it, all that got him was a groan. The hype, and then they hyped the video for the main event aired, followed by the ring and the entrances. Justin Roberts had old school ring introductions for or before the match. So we get John Cena versus Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton versus Kane for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And though they did not retire either belt, but John Cena had them both in the ring and sported them, holding them high, wear one around the uh, neck and one in the air. Then he took them both off and put them both in the air. They paired off with Orton. Versus Cena, and then Kane versus Reigns to start the match. Orton took out Cena, and he and Kane double teamed Reigns. Orton uh, worked, uh, would cover Reigns for a pen, pen attempt, and then Kane would uh, watch Cena to make sure that he didn't interfere. Cena made his way to the uh, back to the ring, and they dumped Reigns before Kane once again stepped aside for Orton to try and pin Cena. Kane went to the floor to keep Reigns occupied, but Reigns slammed him into the plate. That allowed Cena to come back and hit the five knuckle shuffle. Cena lifted for the attitude adjustment, but Orton escaped over the top rope. Cena turned around and faced off with Reigns. Orton and Kane ran in and attacked them before they could lock up. Orton dragged Cena to the floor and Kane slammed the Reigns. He covered for a two count and Orton uh, hit the ring pissed off. He and Kane argued and devolved until they were fighting. They went to the top rope and Cena and Reigns recovered. They ran over and worked. A Tower of Doom spot with Orton taking the suplex and Cena and Reigns double power bombing Orton. Reigns and Cena once again teased the locking up, but Kane sat up. The match broke down and Kane stopped Orton from getting a pin. Reigns and Orton traded half crabs. Cena hooked a cross face on Orton while Reigns had him in a half crab. Kane broke get up and not knocking Reigns to the floor. Cena hit the attitude adjustment on Kane. And hooked the STF on Orton. Orton sold it uh, forever and went to tap out. But Reigns stopped his hand. He pulled Orton to the floor and threw him into the announce team. Reigns and Cena finally faced off, but the crowd didn't seem to care. 
Reigns went for the Superman punch, but Cena ducked it and hit his uh, hit his slam. He went for the five knuckle shuffle, but Reigns popped up and hit it to, hit the Superman punch. The crowd finally came alive for that. He hit Spear, but Kane broke the pinfall. Reigns and Kane spared off. Reigns hit the Superman punch on Kane. He went to the floor and hit his kick through the ropes on Cena. He hit a similar move on Orton on the announce table. And then he hit a he hit the hat trick on Kane. He speared Orton through the through the timekeeper table and went back to the Reigns for the spear on Kane. Kane grabbed the throat. But Reigns powered him away and he hit the spear. Cena broke the count. Cena hit the attitude adjustment on Kane, but Reigns broke the count. Cena hit the attitude adjustment on Reigns out of nowhere and Kane had to make the save, which made sense considering how many finishes the finisher he has just taken as Kane hit choke slams on, on Cena and Reigns. Covered range for a two. He gave the throat slit gesture, and then the feet started to uh, give problems again, even for the reporter. As Kane went for the tombstone, but Reigns escaped, hit a spear. Orton broke the count and hit an RKO, and Reigns, well, see the flu, flew in and hit an IGS well. Attitude adjustment on, on Orton, on top of Kane, and then he covered Kane for the win. Well, John Cena retains the world's heavyweight championship and an 18 minute point. Five second match. A uh, good match, but the crowd seemed tired or something. They never really got into the match, even down the, the stretch. They picked the spots where they cheered for whoever they wanted to, or that there for for the rest. That hurt the overall presentation for the for the, for those at home. But I think everyone should be happy with that match. It entertained well and protected Reigns nicely. All in all, very entertaining, entertaining pay-per-view from WWE. I don't understand the bait and switch with Ambrose and Reigns, but uh, we didn't expect a clean finish anyway, so it's forgivable. The tag match went uh, delivered as expected, and really there were no bad matches. If you didn't enjoy the pay-per-view at all, I'm sure you should be watching wrestling. Shouldn't be watching wrestling anymore. This is about as good as it gets outside of major shows. I uh, Foods. Uh, the results for the Battleground pay-per-view NXT uh, spoilers and more reports. Thank you, peace out. See you on my video. God bless. And if you didn't know, you better call me, bro.